Alright guys, this is Eager Elo, and this is The Great and Powerful Trixie Falls in Love with the Pinecone, Part 2. Using her magic, she pulled the pinecone free from the mud, then made her way back into the path, before placing it back on the ground. It rolled back a little, almost as if it was looking up at her, and said, Thank you, I just wish I could reward you for your kindness. Before I go, could you help me wash off this mud? Trixie tutted and looked around her. Enough of this. Just come out and tell me who you are. Why, I am just a simple kind cone, it replied. But if you must have a name, I guess you can call me Piney. The blue unicorn gave a defeated sigh and then levitated the pine cone once more, taking it to a ditch running alongside the path that held a shallow patch of water. She dipped in it and promptly span around, loosening the dirt that it had clinged to it. So... How do you do it? she asked, lifting Penny back around. Trixie demands how you... You're manipulating this thing with your magical puppetry. No tricks. I am what you see me, it replied, safely back on its terra firma. But now I must leave. I have business to attend to. It began to roll away. Trixie watched it leave in amusement. Questions racing towards her head. She was going mad. Or was this a pinecone truly sentient? Wait, she called, sloping, sloping, <laughs> stopping in his tracks. I, I, oh, for Celestia's sakes, for Celestia's sakes, stay with Trixie, wants to talk with you. Piney remained still for a moment, apparently thinking something over, then rolled back to her. You really are... You, aren't you? She said, finally staring to believe. I suppose it's hard to accept, but yes, I am. What are you doing here, alone in the forest? This is one of the less dangerous areas, but it's still no place for a pony to be. The boastful unicorn laughed. Dangerous? Ha! Huh. This place holds no fear for me, for I am the great and powerful Trixie, who banished the Ursa Major. She trailed off in mid-spell. Perhaps now is not the time. After her own experience uh, with those two cults, she didn't want to attract any more groupies for a while. I am Trixie, traveling with a magician by trade, purveyor of magistry and illusion. Unfortunately, Trixie has a little mishap in Ponyville. Really? I was just heading there myself before I got stuck. Is there any chance of you heading back? It would be wonderful if you could just give me a lift. I have trouble getting anywhere. Because I'm a pinecone. Yes. Oh, uh, quite. Well, Trixie does have to head back there. I left my purse behind, and I'm not looking forward to trying to find a bed for tonight. I can tell you, especially looking like this, she gestured her muddy flank. Oh, I'm afraid I can't really see you, said Piney. I don't have eyes. I rely on my uh, any kind of ESP. And just in case you're wondering how I'm speaking to you, the answer is simple. Telepathy. You really are a talented little pinecone, aren't you? said Trixie, inspecting it closely. I don't understand it. How are you even alive? It's probably better than you don't know. If you don't want to go back to Ponyville, why don't you just sleep in Alfresco? It's a fairly warm night. Sleep rough? Me? she said aghast. I don't think you understand. I am only used to the best, for I am the great and powerful Trixie. She raised herself up in the hind legs and launched a couple of magical fireworks. Piney was unimpressed. If you're not careful, you're going to set up a forest on fire. Anyway, sleeping outside isn't too bad. I've gotten used to it. She thought it over. It was getting pretty late, as if she went back now. She would have to wake some pony up. She could hardly go to sleep in the street, after all. If she kept here, she might be able to sneak back in early morning, pick up her things in unseen, and made a journey next to daylight. Very well, she said, trotting over to the nearby bush and perching herself to underneath it for shelter. So tell me about yourself. How exactly does a pine cone come to life? Oh, I really don't know. Said Piney. I just woke up one morning, and yes, there I was, a pine cone. Hmm, Trixie will have to investigate you. Every pony needs an origin story. There's no need, really, though I appreciate the thought. Now tell me about yourself.
The pair chatted for a long while. Piney spoke out of its journey through the Everfree Forest, and Trixie spoke about Trixie. But eventually, she began to grow tired. Yawning, she curled her legs beneath the, her body and rested her head on the ground. Come rest by me, Piney, she said, indicating her by her side. It'll be warmer for you. Thanks for the offer, but I don't need to sleep, she, it said. In fact, given by my magical nature, I think if I ever lost consciousness, then I'd probably die. Trixie only ha half heard his words, as she quickly losing her ability to stay awake. You are a very silly pine cone, she said, drifting away. But I like you. Scene change. Trixie woke up later and she had attended to that morning, mostly because it had been so late and when she went into sleep. Piney sensed that her friend was up and hopped and over. Oh, shoot! Every pony will be awake now, she said, leaping up to her feet. I'll have to hurry. They might have cleared my stuff away already. Sorry, I should have woken you up, said Piney, but you seem so peaceful. The blue unicorn used her magic to start scraping off the dried dirt off her flank, and then wetted the dock leaf in the ditch so she can use it to make shift flannel. flannel. And how was your night? I hope you weren't bored, having no pony to speak to. Oh, it was all right. I didn't have anything to do, so I stuck around here, listening to you breathing. It was nice, said the uh, the pine cone. Hmm, said the Trixie uncertainly. I'm not sure if that's supposed to find that cute or creepy. I'd go with creepy, said Pine, Piney Cheeky, Cheekly, running around her in a circle. Come on, let's get going. Trixie levitated the pine cone into her back, allowing it to nestle against her neck. Then she rushed off to Ponyville. The journey did not take long. She was an unusual sight, that Trixie. The town's residents muttered along among themselves as they saw her strolling in. in. Flank still not fully cleaned and a pine cone in her mane. They're all staring at us, whispered Piney. Let them. Trixie does uh, let them. Trixie does not have to explain herself to the likes of them, she said. Oh, thank goodness, it's still here. The wreckage of her trailer was sorry sight to behold. It had been utterly flattened by that rampaging Ursa Miner. Trixie was cautious to getting too close, as there were shards of splinters and woods everywhere. She carefully pulled it apart as she still found it her tattered cloak and hat. The hat was right off, but her cloak was still serviceable. She used her uh, magic to remove the most of the splinters and quickly checked to make sure her purse was still there. Trixie, what are you doing here? Come calling back for your more stuff, eh? That was a horrible voice. Let me just try that one more time. Trixie, what are you doing here? Come crawling back for your stuff, eh? She knew that voice. Sure enough, she looked up to see Rainbow Mane Pegasus. She had bested as best part of her show yesterday. Rainbow Dash folded her front legs, looking smug. So much for your flashy exit. Ha! This is priceless. Wait till I tell. Wait a minute. Why do you have that pine cone on your back? Flustered, Trixie struggled to come up with a suitable retort. Well, why shouldn't I have a pine cone on my back? Dash was unsure how to respond to that tone. To that one. She flew up close to that stage magician, looking down on her. Whatever. I hope you enjoy eating humble pie. I'm telling all my friends about this. With that, she flew away, leaving Trixie seeing with embarrassment. Seething with embarrassment. Wow, that was harsh, said Piney. Hey, tell you what. Do you want to get revenge on her? What do you suggest? She said, miserable but still intrigued. Let's go somewhere, private for a moment, it said, then waited as Trixie trotted down in the alley between the two houses. Now? It said. Oh, no, excuse me. Now, it said. As you know already, I am no ordinary pine cone, but I still also have the ability to make your dreams come true. I can lend you some of my power. All you have to do is eat one of my scales. Trixie blinked twice, by in surprise. Wait, what? You want me to eat part of you? I can't do that. 
Besides, won't it hurt? I'll be fine. Go on. Give it a go. You won't regret it. Wincing, she used her magic to detach one of the piney scales and it, as a gentle tug. Oh, God. This already went to thir 10 minutes. Do you know what? Um, I'm going to have to skip this. I don't want it to exceed like 11 minutes. Thank you guys for listening to this. This is part two. The great and powerful Trixie falls in love with the pinecone.